Hey everybody, I'm excited to introduce you to the newest member of the HGMM team, Jonathan Garth. John's an experimenter, a builder, and a crafter. Anything for people who value a self-sufficient lifestyle. His own channel, Nailed It, is brand new. Check it out now and subscribe to get in on the ground floor. It's always fun watching new channels grow. In this video for HGMM, John's going to be demonstrating a really, really cool way to set up a self-watering small space garden. This is a great project for apartment balconies or patios. The best part, you can get fish to do all the work. <laughs> Check it out, this is really cool. Hello, and welcome to Home and Garden for Mere Mortals. My name's John, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make this small space or balcony garden. It only takes up about two feet of square space, so you could put it on a balcony or some small space that gets a little bit of sunlight. If you like what you see here, come check out my channel, Nailed It. I have a lot of similar build videos and other things you might enjoy. So this is my first attempt at creating a small space garden. And as you can see, it's not very small and it has a lot of flaws in its design. Things I didn't see uh, when I first created it. See, the bed in this design has a curved shape, which causes a lot of the food that's being grown here to slope down towards the center and get moved around. And it's really bad for the roots and for the system. So I want to create something smaller, more compact and better that can grow more food without having a lot of damage to the plants while it's trying to grow. This system starts with a fish tank. We take the water from the fish tank and pump it up top. And this is where the plants get their water from. That's great, John, but why does it have to be a fish tank? Can't you just use a tank of water and pump the water up to the plants? That's a great question, random YouTuber. Let's talk about it. I wanted this system to be as maintenance free as possible. No watering, no tilling. I really just wanted somebody else to do all the work for me. That's where the fish come in. You see, we take the wastewater from the fish, we pump it up here, and bacteria that grows inside these pebbles actually change the ammonia inside the fish's wastewater into nitrates. And that's how the plants get their food. I'm literally having somebody else do all the work for me. It makes this system virtually maintenance free and provides a healthy growing environment for all of your crops. So to get started, we're gonna be using this, a 55 gallon barrel. Wait, John, where am I gonna get a 55 gallon barrel? I'm glad you asked. You can find these on Craigslist for 20 to $25. They're really cheap, but you wanna make sure that it says food grade and not something that stored chemicals that could be toxic to the fish or your plants or you later on if you eat those fish or plants. Now, there are a lot of different ways to cut this blue barrel. I decided to use a jigsaw. You could use a sawzall, a number of different tools. I chose to use a jigsaw just because I figured most people had this at home. And so I want to use instructions and tools that most people can do right there at home. Now, I've also added an access hole where I can go in and feed the fish or set up an automatic fish feeder. And I've also added a brace for the top. It's just a small square made out of wood, about 17 inches. This is gonna hold the top in place and we're gonna come back and secure it later. Now, the next step is plumbing. Don't worry, it's not very complicated. It's just a little bit of three quarter inch PVC, a T for the top, two right angles, and that makes up the top piece that's gonna go in the grow bed of our garden. The bottom part is just a coupler, a little more three quarter inch PVC, and a 45 angle joint. This center piece I cut to about 12 inches, and these outer pieces I cut to about eight inches. Now this is gonna create the siphon in the grow bed, so once it fills with water, this will automatically take on the water and pull it back down into our fish tank. This is what's called a flood and drain system. It allows our grow bed to flood with the nutrient rich water, and then once it floods high enough, our siphon takes all that water and sucks it right back down to the fish tank. And now that we have our top part in place, we can just lift this up and put the bottom part on as well. And that's it. Now my next step isn't necessarily going to be your next step you're gonna to wanna to fill up your fish tank and let it run for about a week or so so that the bacteria has a chance to grow before you put the fish in. In my case, I can just take my current water and transfer it over to my other tank and transfer my fish as well. 
Another good idea, if this is your first time setting up this kind of system, is taking about a gallon of water out of a fish tank, or maybe a friend's fish tank when they clean theirs, and add it to your system when you're setting it up for that first week. It'll give it sort of a jump start on that good bacteria in your system. Now while I'm waiting for my tank to fill, I thought I'd give you another good tip. At the parts where all of my plumbing start, I use this stuff. I take this and I roll it up and put it at the entrance of all of the parts of my plumbing. And this way, none of those little pebbles can get caught and cause the system to stop working for any reason. If you actually look at my pump here, you can see that I add that right there just to make sure none of those pebbles come up into the system and prevent the pump from working or perhaps prevent the uh, siphon from working later on. I don't want to forget all my aquarium goodies, fake plants. Now I'm filling this with water to test the siphon to see exactly where the water line stops so I know where to drill the hole for the tube from the pump. That way I can put the tube through the top without getting any leakage down the back. The siphon didn't seem to want to kick on with the two-way system that I had, so I plugged one side and that worked like a charm. So if you're gonna make this at home, forget the T in the middle, you just need a right angle connector to connect only one side of this siphon. Now, the next step is transferring my expanded clay pebbles. These expanded clay pebbles are what allow bacteria to grow and filter the water and change the ammonia from the fish's wastewater into the nitrites. It's really healthy for the plants and it filters the water for the fish. These kind of clay pebbles are very frequently used in a system like this one. So you can find these on Amazon or sometimes find them at your local nursery for setting up this type of system. And before you put your pebbles in, you want to make sure you put in some kind of filter to make sure those pebbles don't go back up into your plumbing. I'm going to use this wire wrap that I talked about before. Now I added these bungees on both sides just to make sure the top doesn't move around or have any issues if there's wind or anything like that. Now one of the next things you'll want to start doing is planting your seeds. And this is really tricky with a system like this. You want to make sure the seeds are underneath the pebbles a little bit and right where that water line reaches just to the top and then the siphon kicks on and it drains back down. That way they can get moist but they don't sit in water for a really long time. Now, in just a little bit of time, your system can go from this into this. Now, you'll notice that not each basket has a sprout, and that's pretty common that sometimes the seeds don't sprout. Um, I normally would reseed these a little bit earlier, but I wanted these to grow a little bit so that you can kind of see uh, the difference here, obviously. These don't have sprouts, and these have some, uh, some pretty good plants coming in that uh, I expect will be uh, pretty, pretty fruitful. Unfortunately, I may have attracted a little furry friend. I had to pull my corn stalk out because it looked like it got eaten by something small. But you can see the root system and how it kind of grows out of the uh, bottom of the basket there. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to scrap this, uh, this stalk of corn. And I also found this on the ground makes me think that uh, they're getting hungry. So keep an eye out for rodents or other pests. Uh, as you start to grow food around your house, you might attract different things like butterflies and bees with flowers and stuff like that. So it's just another thing to think about. Well, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Nailed It. We'll see you next time. In the case of seeds, their packaging can be a treasure trove of information. For example, it's recommended that these tomatoes be started indoors six weeks prior to the last frost. But how are we supposed to know when the last frost is going to come?